Coming this fall from SJS Direct in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, The Man Crisis. Learn why so many men are struggling to find their way in an increasingly gynocentric world in The Man Crisis. You can pre-order your copy of The Man Crisis today on Amazon.com. One of the most frustrating work environments to work in is one where a beta male is a supervisor or a manager. And the reason why work environments where beta males are supervisors or managers are frustrating to work in is because as it relates to the beta male, the beta male hates to be in a leadership position. And the reason why beta males don't want to be in leadership positions is because beta males don't like being responsible for anything. Whenever you give a beta male responsibility, the beta male will wind up becoming overwhelmed. And because they wind up becoming overwhelmed, they just wind up shutting down. Now, I had the displeasure of working with a beta male supervisor 10 years ago when I was working at the City College of New York. And as I was working in their science library, I had, the dis again, the displeasure of dealing with all of the dysfunction that comes with a beta male being in charge of a leadership position. Now, this beta male was a college professor, and he had a doctorate degree. Unfortunately, even though he had this doctorate degree, he just never developed leadership skills that enabled him to be qualified to be in the managerial position of a head librarian. Now, when I went to the City College of New York a day before to meet with everyone before I was supposed to start, I started to see the dysfunctional beta male behavior in this guy's behavior, and it left some red flags in my mind. This man was supposed to be the head of this library department, but his first action is not to introduce himself as the head of this library department. It was to tell me that the black woman who was my co-worker was going to be my supervisor. And this is a classic beta male trait, because beta males don't like being responsible for anything or anyone. What they do is delegate that power to someone else. And usually, because beta males are emotionally connected to their mothers and female authority figures, what beta males like to do is give their power to women. And when they give this power to women, it's usually in a passive-aggressive way. Passively, he will be giving you a pseudo-position, like a pseudo-manager title or a pseudo-supervisory title, but aggressively, what he's doing is giving you that responsibility without giving you equal or just compensation. And what happens is, is that this woman is being given this power, but she's being given this power even though she's being paid on the same level as, a, as, the, as the person who she's supposed to be a co-worker on. And she doesn't see how she's being devalued by this man, and she doesn't see that what he's trying to do is pass his responsibility on to her in a co-dependent way. And this is what beta males like to do because, again, beta males, they love having the high power of a title and the prestige of a title, but they don't like taking a leadership role or taking responsibility. And I saw that the next day when I went to go meet with the assistant dean of the library who told me that this man was the supervisor, and again, he told me a different story, but that's all par for the course when it relates to beta males. Beta males, again, don't like having power, nor do they like having responsibility. And as it relates to beta males, another reason why they are ineffective managers is because they just don't like dealing with with conflict. And as it relates to a beta male, he will not ever talk to you about a problem. Instead, he will either send somebody else to go deal with the problem or try to avoid dealing with the problem. But 
as a manager, a supervisor, your job is dealing with conflict. This is something I learned back when I studied business administration in college, is that a manager's job is solving problems. And that's all a manager does all day long. And if you don't want to be a manager, you don't want, you have to, if you don't want to be a manager, you're not going to be able to be one because you don't know how to solve problems. Because that's your job, is solving problems in a diplomatic and effective way where everyone receives some sort of benefit. That's all a manager does. But beta males, they don't want to solve problems because they want to avoid conflict. And what they do is, because they want to avoid conflict, they abdicate power. And they abdicate power by giving that woman the power and then going to hide in their office. And when I was working at the City College of New York, that's what this professor would do, is hide in his office and not talk to anyone. And that led to an issue I had when I was opening the library, because I would come in at 8.30 and open the library, um, getting the equipment ready, then I would go sit and wait until it's 9 o'clock. And instead of him coming to talk to me directly, he then again goes to the black woman and tells her to tell me that the library needs to be open at 8.55. And I'm sitting there and I'm asking myself a question. If the library's supposed to be open at 9 o'clock, why are we opening it at 8.55? And she just gets all angry at me and snaps at me. And then he comes back at me with a cell phone with his time, not the time that's on any of the clocks in the library. And what was really dysfunctional about this whole situation is this man saw me come in early, came in about 10 minutes before the woman came in, and could have easily talked to me face to face. But because, again, your beta male fears conflict, especially with other men, they fear asserting their authority. And that's what makes them very weak and ineffective leaders, because a man who wants to get things done he is not going to go and go through another person. If he sees that man 10 minutes or 20 minutes before somebody else comes in, he's going to have a discussion with that man face to face to let him know what he needs to be done. But again, your beta male doesn't want to take any sort of lead of anything, and they don't want to be, take responsibility for anything. So. They either So they sit there simmering and boiling in their feelings instead of going out to confront the conflict and work towards solving the problem. And that's why, again, they're just bad to have in leadership positions because leaders, again, take charge of situations and leaders deal with their employees face-to-face -face and they take the lead in the situation from minute one because a strong leader they are going to set a tone from minute one they are going to lay down what the rules are from minute one and they're going to set a direction for their employees from minute one because as the leader they want the employees to follow in their direction but when you have a beta male he doesn't want to he doesn't want to lead but he wants people to see him as someone they are supposed to respect. But people only respect authority figures when they assert authority. And this is something beta males have a problem doing in jobs. They have a problem asserting authority. They have a problem approaching people as they assert their authority. And they have a problem being someone people can see as authoritative. And that's, again, due to their very, very passive presence. Because when I was dealing with this guy, I just noticed how passive he was and how weak his body language was. And I said to myself, you know, if you're supposed to be a leader, you should be a little bit more assertive. You should know what you want. And you should be clear about what you want. And you should say what you want. Because that's another trait of leaders is that leaders have a strong voice, and they don't need to have people speaking for them. 
they speak for themselves. So that was another thing that I took from my experience at City College of New York dealing with a beta male leader. And another thing that beta males like to do in positions that makes them very frustrating to work with is they focus on keeping up appearances instead of trying to be, make your products the, or services the best that they can possibly be. Because someone who has a quality product or quality service, they don't need to keep up appearances. It is what it is. And when you're dealing with a beta male, what they will do is try to make things look good on the outside but not focus on the quality of the products and services on the inside. And this guy, when I was working there, he was more about keeping the library appearing a certain way instead of making sure that the library's books and services were up to a certain standard. Because an effective manager, they're going to sit there and say, I need everything to be a certain standard so when your big wig department heads and all these other people come in, they know that everything is up to a certain standard. But because beta males are used to chaos, dysfunction, and they want their smooth world, what it is is that what they will do is they will, because they want to avoid conflicts and obstacles, they will keep things a certain way and try to please others instead of demanding what they need in order to get their work done. And this was a problem I had dealing with this beta male one day when I was working at this library where he approached me on a Friday talking about how he wanted to have this table moved. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying to myself, why don't you go to maintenance to have this table moved? Because in a union job, you're not supposed to do anything outside of your job description. So you coming to me, the guy working the circulation desk, to move a table, that's not something in my job description. And again, beta males will try to make these covert contracts and covert deals and because they don't want to deal with conflict. Whereas a man is just going to go and make this phone call and the maintenance people who have the straps and the tools, they're going to come in and move the table because he made the call. And what he told me was it was too difficult for him to get maintenance to come in. And again, that's something that beta males do, is say that it's too hard for them, too difficult for them to do things. And it's, again, it's due to their inability to deal with conflict. Because professional managers, they know they're going to have to deal with conflict. And if they have to call somebody six, seven times, they're going to make those calls because they know that this is part of their jo a person's job and it's what they're paying for. They're not going to try to circumvent by having somebody come out of their job description to go do a job they're not qualified to do or possibly put that person at risk of injury or harm because they are too afraid to go and ask people to do what they're paid to do. Now another thing that this beta male and this female were coming up with was regarding the security of the library and asking me to go and look in people's bags or ask them if they have books if the alarm went off. And again, that's outside of the job description for someone working the circulation desk. Instead of them asking the department heads for a licensed security guard to do this, they were asking me to do this in a covert way. And again, that's, again, another trait of beta males in a workplace is that they, they want people to do extra jobs because they don't have the confidence or the courage to ask big department heads for increases in resources to better serve the customer base. And that's another beta male trait is that they are afraid to ask what for what they need. And that really frustrates a lot of people because a lot of times people may need new computers, they may need um, new staplers, they may need new resources, or they may need to increase their budget in order to do certain tasks. And because he's too afraid to ask higher ups for more the departments have to wind up doing less 
with more, I mean more with less, and that frustrates a lot of people, and it sucks a lot of energy out of the room, because people are expecting him to take the lead, they're expecting him to take responsibility, and they're expecting him to have the confidence and the courage to go out here and be able to help them be able to meet the goals they're supposed to meet. But because he doesn't want to solve any problems, what happens is people can't meet their goals and they can't focus on the things that need to be focused on. So that really frustrates a lot of people when they deal with a beta male in a leadership position because he just does not take the initiative to go out and demand what needs to be demanded. And another trait that really frustrates a lot of employees about beta males is that beta males are extremely cheap. A beta male, when you put him in a business, he will go out here and he won't spend money that needs to be spent on what it needs to be spent on. Instead, again, he spends money on superficial things to keep up appearances and that really frustrates people because the money that he's spending to keep up in an appearance could actually be used on spending on resources to actually improve the quality of product or quality of service and that's something that really frustrates people about dealing with a beta male in a leadership position this is the kind of guy who will dress up a place and make it look nice on the outside, but on the inside, what will happen is you won't see anything of value of for things. He's all about flash, but he's never about substance. And that, again, makes a work environment with this guy extremely frustrating to deal with. It's his obsession with appearances and not about measured standards of goals. And one of the more frustrating things of dealing with a beta male is, again, your beta male, he wants a smooth world, he wants a comfortable place, and he doesn't like competition. So you may have very talented people working with this beta male in a work environment, and he will try to find ways to get those people out of that work environment because he wants to go back to having his smooth, comfortable world where he doesn't have to deal with any conflicts, any obstacles, or any challenges, nor does he have to deal with any competition. Because competition means that he can't be comfortable, and it means that he has to rise to a higher level level. And beta males, they don't want to rise to any level. They want their world smooth. They want their world flat. But in order to grow as an employee, you cannot grow without making any sort of change. And I saw this when I was doing a performance evaluation with this supervisor on 9-11, where he was trying to find ways to minimize my work at the library and then said that he was looking for someone with a sales and customer service background. Now, I had provided excellent customer service over the six months I had been working at this library. A lot of the students knew me. A lot of the students had great respect for me. And they knew that I would go out of my way to provide them with quality service. But this guy, in his way to try to take a jab at me, decided to say he was looking for someone with a sales and customer service background because I had been a writer before them. And what he didn't understand, again, was that writers, we are salesmen, we provide customer service, and we have to do that in our correspondence, and we have to do it in person when we do things like do book signings or work with people like literary agents or we network with bookstores. But this guy, because he was all in wanting to keep his world smooth, was looking for ways to get me out of that job. And with the help of that black woman, sadly, that's what happened to me in October of 2008. I wound up losing that civil service job because this beta male 
wanted to make this false accusation of me sleeping on the job, even though I was standing up and looking down at the desk. I was not sleeping, but this because this black woman came and said that I was, this is what led to me losing that good civil service job. And that's what happens when you deal with beta males in a work environment. Beta males, they don't want to do to grow, they don't want to change, they want to stay in the same place, they want everything to plateau. And when you have a beta male in a management position, nothing ever grows, nothing ever improves, nothing ever moves to another level, because beta males, again, these men want to avoid conflict, they want to avoid obstacles, they want to avoid challenges, and what's really frustrating about dealing with them is that if you stay under a beta male supervisor, you will never rise to a higher level because this man will go out of his way to impede your growth because he doesn't want to grow and he doesn't want anyone else to grow and like a crab in a barrel if he sees somebody trying to rise what he's going to do is take that person down and this is why beta males are bad for business because a beta male will hinder the growth of your business because when he's in his leadership position he doesn't want anyone to he doesn't want to lead anyone he doesn't want to take responsibility for anything and he doesn't want to take any sort of charge of anything and because he refuses to take power and responsibility over anything nothing ever grows in any way shape or form and I saw that firsthand when I was watching Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares, watching Gordon Ramsay's Hotel Hell, and watching Gordon Ramsay's 24 Hours to Hell and Back. And in all three of those shows, he shows you what happens when beta males take charge of a business. And what happens is, those businesses, they may start out in the beginning strong, but because this man is afraid of conflict, afraid of leadership, and afraid to take responsibility, those businesses quickly start taking a turn for the worse because instead of him adapting, changing, and learning new skills, what he does is he stagnates and then he tries to hinder anyone else who tries to come in and help improve the quality of the business or tries to make efforts to change things because he's comfortable with the business being in the state that it's in. Unfortunately, what he doesn't understand is that in order for a business to become a strong business and a competitive business, people in that business have to change, they have to grow, they have to adapt, and you cannot go out of your way to, to impede those people by doing things like hiding in your office or delegating power that you're supposed to take in the hands of a woman, a woman who usually winds up frustrated and overwhelmed because she's being made to take responsibility for a job that she was never supposed to do in the first place. And when it, as it relates to these women, usually these women who take that responsibility of these pseudo-managerial positions, they wind up becoming so frustrated and overwhelmed that they don't see what this guy is doing to them and how it's negatively affecting them because he's got you in his doing his job while he abdicates power and hides in an office and that's not something you want a, in a leader type person again a leader type person is going to set a tone from day one they're going to set a direction from day one and they're going to take responsibility so you can take responsibility for the tasks you are assigned to. And with everybody doing their part, that's what makes the business run smoothly and efficiently. And if you have an organization with a beta male, you're going to notice certain things when he's in charge. There are no real rules, because that's what happened when I was working at City College. No real rules, no real tone, no real direction. And people are doing their own thing. And the reason why they're doing their own thing is because 
no one at the top is taking charge of anything or taking the lead. And as people try to solve problems on their own, what happens is they wind up becoming extremely frustrated because they're not getting any sort of guidance or direction from anyone in a management position because beta males, they, they, they're they good at just managing stuff from, the, from just sitting there because they just like to sit in the back, but they're not good at doing other parts of being a manager, which is teaching, mentoring, or counseling your employees because that's another part of being a leader is understanding that not only do you have to look out for your people, but you have to provide them guidance and support. And this is what frustrates a lot of people when they deal with beta males in a management position is you want to learn more about the job and he's not going to teach you anything about the job. And he's supposed to be the most experienced individual in the room, but he won't teach anything and you're sitting there trying to figure out things on your own. And that's something that's really frustrating because I remember having this guy give me this performance evaluation talking about how I needed to show more interest in the job. But in actuality, how can I be more interested in a job if the leaders of the company show nothing but apathy and indifference? In order for someone to come into a business, they may come in with passion and heart, but if they have their passion negated by this leader who sucks the energy out of the room, they can't get interested in work because you aren't interested in work. Again, when you're a leader, you're the one setting the tone for that organization, you're the one laying the foundation for that organization, and you set the standard for that organization. And the whole thing is, your employee's attitude comes from your attitude, and if you have a positive attitude, what's going to happen is those employees are going to have a positive attitude as well because they're going to see your passion, your heart, and your love for your work. And that's what's going to make them interested in working at that company. But when you have a beta male at a company, these guys are nothing more than apathetic and indifferent. And they want you to do the things that they want to do. And then when you go out of your way to make those efforts to do the things that they want to do, what happens is because these guys think like females, they get jealous, they get angry, and that's when they look to take you out because they don't want you surpassing them. They want their world smooth. And because they want their world smooth, this is what leads to businesses becoming mediocre and declining. And they wind up declining again because this guy just won't let anything grow because he's afraid of change and he doesn't want to change because he wants everything to stay the same because that's what he's comfortable with. But anyone who understands management and business understands things are always changing and as a leader you have to be able to change with them because your job is solving problems and that's all a manager does is solve problems, but beta males don't want to solve problems. They want to run from problems. They want to hide from problems. They want to get away from problems. But what's really troubling is these same men want the success of top managers and they want the accolades of top managers, but they don't want to do the work of a top manager. Because a top manager, he understands that in order for him to achieve success, he has to go through pain, he has to go through loss, he has to fail, and he has to do this because that's all part of conflict. And it's his ability to resolve conflict that leads to him having success because his ability to resolve conflict is all about him getting two sides to understand that there are benefits to the changes he's making, there is benefits to him um, building these alliances and relationships. There is benefits to him building this network. And all of these things are what lead to him getting that success because he knows how to work with people towards achieving goals. 
But because the beta male hides from people, they wind up not being able to help him move forward, and that's what prevents businesses from moving at all. Because beta males, they aren't about progress, and they impede progress. So whenever you have a beta male in a management position, it's one of the worst things you could ever deal with. And when I was working at City and College of New York, that was the lesson I learned in the seven months I worked in that civil service position, was that whenever you have a beta male in a management position, that beta male is going to prevent that business from being the best business it could ever possibly be. And from that experience, I learned to quickly identify a beta male and if you see a beta male in a management position, the best thing for you to do is start making your plans to move to another company because you're never going to get any sort of success unless that beta male is removed from that management position. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.